welcome to the Grace at Last podcast. Here we hope you find freedom from religion and traditions passed down by man that God never intended for us to struggle with. Let's quit looking around us and begin to look within at God in us and realize all we need is already there. Together, guided by the Holy Spirit, let's learn what God really thinks of us and discover what is pleasing to Him. I think we're going to find out it's a whole lot easier than what we thought. Hi, Corrine here for episode 31 of our Grace at Last podcast. In our last episode, episode 30, we looked at the Lord's Prayer and we asked the question if it's appropriate and fitting for you and I to be praying that prayer. I believe the answer is no. I believe Jesus fulfilled and accomplished all of those things with his death and burial and resurrection. And one of the things that I try to stay away from is asking God for things that he's already done. And I believe that the Lord's Prayer falls into that category, at least for me it does. But there are some things that Jesus said that pertain to all men always. And I think we should take notice of those things. And if you're like me, you might be asking the questions, well, how do I know? How do I know without picking and choosing? Either it's all or nothing. I can wrestle with those questions and those thoughts myself. But the spirit of truth in us, he's going to reveal what's true. We can trust him. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth and he is inside of us and he will reveal the Father's heart, intention. And when we understand scripture by understanding the context of the verse and the time in which it was written or it was said, that can help us a lot. We can ask the question, how does it line up with other New Testament letters? And how can it help me understand what Christ has done more? I used to think of the Bible in two parts, like the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, like it's books, you know, certain books from here, Genesis to Malachi. Recently, it's changed to include the Gospels and the Old Covenant because the New Covenant didn't start until Jesus' death. New Covenant being a collection of books, you know, from the cross forward, but it's not about that. That's not how I want to look at it. I don't even like calling our class Bible study because I don't want to study a book. I want to know God. And he has revealed himself through his spirit in me, but he's also revealed himself in the scriptures and how he has dealt with man down through the ages, how he has related to man and how man can come to him. It's just amazing. It's beautiful. And I love the old and the new covenant. But it's not about books that I can gain knowledge from. It's about truths that I can understand that can help me understand God's love more. What does God want us to know about him? What is he saying to us? That's what we want to understand. And again, last week we looked at the Lord's Prayer, what is commonly known as the Lord's Prayer. But we live after Jesus said those things. Today, we live in an age of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of believers. And Jesus tells us of a prayer that he prays to the Father in John 17. And I think it is incredible. John 17 tells us about the unity that we have. And honestly, I've never really paid much attention to it. I'm not sure how that happened, but that happened. I mean, I've read it. I've studied it. My Bible's colored in those areas. I've led discussions and classes on it, but I missed the real beauty that was embedded in there, the oneness that I have with God. And now when I read it, I see and I feel something hard to even put into words because it means so much. It's like this intimate time between God and the Father that we get this insight in John 17. It's a conversation between the Father and the Son. And it's written down for us, for you and I to share in this communion and dialogue between them. And it's precious. And when we consider the agony of the cross that was coming upon them, and this is what Jesus prayed, it might be the most insightful and telling of all the verses in the Bible when it comes to God's love that's expressed in his son. And that's what I want to talk about today. And I want to go kind of slow and see if I can communicate it in a way 
the Holy Spirit can use to bring a deeper understanding of this covenant of grace and what that means to us. In the first 19 verses of John 17, Jesus is talking to his disciples, those who walked with him in this earthly life, those that believed he was the Christ. And later on in tomorrow's message, we're going to see that Jesus clearly includes us, those that would believe from their testimony, the testimony of those that saw. And in John 17, beginning in verse 1, we see Jesus spoke of these things and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you. Even as you gave him authority over all flesh, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is knowing God. That's what this verse says. It's knowing God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. We have eternal life already because we have Jesus. Eternal life is not a length of life, like forever and ever with no end. No, Jesus says here, eternal life is knowing God and his son whom he sent. That can help us if we're waiting for something that we already have. Eternal life is not when we get to heaven. Jesus said, it's knowing God and it's knowing him. And then he goes on to say in verse four, I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do, John 17, 4. What was the work that God gave Jesus to do? Well, Hebrews 10, 9 says, Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first in order to establish the second. Hebrews 10, 9. The Father's will was that Jesus would come and take away the first covenant, bring in a new covenant, a second covenant, a covenant that Christ finished the work and sat down. A covenant that we receive by faith in what he accomplished on our behalf. It is incredible. Verse 5. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. John seventeen five. Again, Jesus is about to go to the cross. He's going to be reunited to glory with his Father in heaven. Verse 6. I have manifested your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. What does that mean that Jesus said that they kept God's word? Does it mean that they never broke any rules? No, they continued to believe the message of Christ. That didn't change. It's the obedience of faith, not their behavior. Verse 7. Now they have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them, and they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you, and they believed that you sent me. This is what Jesus is saying to his father. Do you see how they kept his word? They have come to know that everything you have given me is from you. Again, verse 8, the words which you gave me, Jesus says, I have given to them and they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you. He says, Jesus says, and they believed God, Father, that you sent me. That's how they kept his word. They believed that Jesus was the one sent by God and they hung on to that. Remember eternal life, believing in the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Jesus goes on in his prayer for these disciples, and he's going to say some things that have never happened before. He's going to say that man can be united, join, become one with the Father and the Son. Isn't that crazy? It is to me. Listen to this. This is what Jesus says. Verse 9, John 17. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine. Do you see that oneness with the Father and the Son? Jesus goes on to say, and I have been glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, and yet they themselves are in the world, and I come to you. That's John 17, 9, 10, and 11. And Jesus says to God, 
that those that are obedient to the faith, in other words, believe God about his son, they can be one with them. They can be one with them by believing. He's saying that those that believe in him can be one with the father and the son. And he goes on to talk about the time that he walked with these, these disciples while he was here on the earth. He says in verse 12, while I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them, and not one of them perished, but the son of perdition, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. So those that responded in faith, they were secure. Jesus said, I kept them. None of them perished. And then he's going to go on to pray to the Father to protect those that were there with Jesus. They had persecution coming their way. Every one of them paid for what they believed with their earthly life. And in verse 13, Jesus says, But now I come to you. Again, the Son speaking, praying to the Father. And these things I speak in the world so that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. John 17, 13 through 15. So Jesus gave them the Father's word, the message of the gospel, the covenant of grace that would come and replace the covenant of the law of Moses and invite all people, not just Jews, to be a member of this body, the body of Christ. Jesus goes on with his dialogue with his father regarding these disciples that again walked this earth with him. Verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. For their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. John 17, 16 through 19. So again, we see that Jesus refers to the Father's word. And I always thought that meant the Bible. But that would not be possible because the Bible hadn't even been compiled yet. God's message is the message of his son. It's the gospel, the gospel of grace, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And Jesus says that he's sending these men that remain faithful to this message out into the world. And they had seen Jesus. They saw him die on the cross. They saw him buried in a tomb. And after the resurrection, they saw him alive. He had appeared to them and over 500 others. And now he says, go tell everyone. Go tell everyone what you have seen, that the deliverer has come and defeated the evil one, the enemy, Satan himself. That is so exciting. And it's all about being one with God. It's all about being one in Christ. And that's what his prayer was for these disciples. And next week, we're going to see that he wants to include us, that he has included us, that we are one with him. And that is the focus that we want to be looking at because it's such an exciting part that Jesus includes us in this prayer this intimate prayer with the Father. It's so exciting. And we're going to get to look what was on Jesus' heart in those final moments of his earthly life when he brings this before the Father. I think it's a beautiful message. And it's a message that Jesus brought in a covenant of grace whereby you enter into his rest by believing, by trusting him and his work. What a beautiful way to live. And again, I hope you join me next week. And until then, I pray that you live in the rest I pray you know the power of his resurrection toward those who believe. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Grace at Last podcast. We hope you learned a truth that will set you free and keep you living in the it is finished promise Jesus declared at the cross. Go to lastministry.org to learn more about who we are and what we're all about as we share this incredible inheritance God has given us in his son.